Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for us in gold fundamental and technical analysis. So getting straight into the week ahead, starting the 12th of June, it will be a busy week. Let me just zoom in a bit in the US with the Fed interest rate decision, inflation rate, retail sales in Michigan, consumer sentiment taking the central stage. Investors will closely follow the European Central Bank and Bank of Japan monetary policy meetings. Additionally, China will be releasing industrial production, retail sales and fixed asset investment data. While uh, we'll skip India as we don't trade that currency, other important releases include Germany's ZEW business confidence, UK's trade balance and GDP for April and Australia's consumer and business confidence as well as jobless rates. So lots of... Um, uh, important and uh, uh, data releases coming out for various countries and we'll see um, how that uh, affects or could affect um, you know prices at least in the sh uh, short to medium term and if you want to have a, a more detailed read um, you can go to tradingeconomics.com and if you go to the week ahead click on that it will show you exactly where um, uh, what to read basically to get into the uh, details. Anyways, looking at the technicals and some more fundamentals in terms of uh, some Bloomberg reports, uh, starting off in the dollar index and looking at last week's um, analysis, I guess what's what's really happened is that the, um, the Federal Reserve are expected to hold rates and skip, but there's expected to be kind of like a hawkish uh, skip at the moment. And it says the Fed is set to pause and assess the effect of rate hikes. So officials consider first break since US tightening began. ECB may keep hiking rates while Bank of Japan and People's Bank of China stay on hold. So there's some convergences there and divergences in terms of uh, interest rate policy and central banks. Uh, Federal Reserve policymakers are about to take their first break from an interest rate hiking campaign that started 15 months ago, even as they confront a resilient US economy and persistent inflation. So the Federal Open Market Committee on Wednesday is expected to maintain its benchmark lending rate at the 5% to 5.25% range, marking the first skip after 10 consecutive increases going back to March of last year. While officials' uh, efforts have helped to reduce price pressures in the US economy, inflation remains well above their goal. So central banks have a mandate to get inflation down to the 2% target, and um, they will have to typically keep hiking rates, which is basically appreciating uh, an attempt to appreciate the currency to get inflation uh, down to their 2% target. And it says investors focus will be on the Fed's quarterly dot plot in its summary of economic projections, which is expected to show the policy benchmark rate at 5.1% at the end of 2023. So in fact, the Fed are expecting really no cuts, right? No cuts by the end of the year. And but by contrast, the markets are pricing in the possibility of a quarter point hike in July, followed by a similar size cut by December. And some Fed policymakers have emphasized that a pause in the hiking cycle shouldn't be seen as a as the final increase. And so I'll just read out quickly what this uh, um, Bloomberg uh, economics uh, economists say and they say that the discord on the FOMC is mounting for those who prefer a skip um, sorry to skip a hike in June want to wait and see given the long and variable lags of monetary policy how 500 basis points um, of rate hikes into date are cooling the economy. So more hawkish members are convinced rate hikes aren't yet restrictive enough and the Fed shouldn't risk falling behind the curve. We see a hawkish skip as a way to maintain um, anonymity in, on the committee. So um, a hawkish skip is expected. And so when we look at the um, uh, FedWatch tool and we see June, we see a, a probability of a hike at um, at 30% pretty much and a hold at um, and no change at 70%. But in July, in fact, we have a 52% chance of a uh, 25 basis point hike and a 17% chance of a 50 basis point hike. And so um, 
although the dollar could be uh, is looking like they are going to hold rates um, if this does come to fruition then the dollar should more likely be supported um, in terms of um, a buy but again we do have CPI data yeah out on um, on Tuesday and so the CPI data is really going to determine whether the direction for the dollar right so if, the, if inflation comes out as expected or higher I think that what you will probably see is the dollar actually look to um, uh, appreciate because that will put pressure on the Fed to to hike because inflation is sticky or it is you know it's not coming down basically um, but if inflation is it, it does come down then um, I think that the dollar is probably more likely to be a bit of a sell and the economic calendar from trading economics uh, inflation rate month for month core inflation and inflation rate year on year you can see you know the forecasts from trading economics as well as the consensus and both the consensus and trading economics expect inflation rate month for month core inflation year on year and inflation rate year on year to come down right to come down so um that's the consensus trade at the moment so but if that does not um you know come to fruition then and it comes in actually as expected or higher then you can expect the dollar really to um to to, to rally quite a bit right um and so that's where we are i think it's all about really the the, the cpi data um is going to determine where the dollar is going to go in at least in the short term looking at the um dollar yen and the dollar yen um i think for me uh, i would probably my bias is more to buy the dollar um if again the um, the data supports that narrative we could get this week prices really kind of pull back if not into the 137s um, based off of what happens with the uh, FOMC and inflation we might actually see prices come down to the 135s if data doesn't support that narrative if inflation is you know coming down naturally then um, that's pretty much uh, you know where we are the uh, the Bank of Japan are not expected to really kind of hike rates. Uh, the Bank of Japan are still very dovish. Ueda, the governor, is quite dovish on um, yield curve control and adjusting any kind of monetary policy. So um, I do think that um, with the Bank of Japan being quite dovish, um, it necessarily, I don't think the market was necessarily going to you know, do some massive trend or anything like that. But I do think that um, it's really about yen strength will be determined on you know the, uh, the dollar weakness at the end of the day uh, same thing goes to all dollar pairs um, Swiss franc um, is in the same boat as everyone else so Swiss franc uh, last week come down just below that uh, uh, that demand zone into a into the top end of this uh, this demand zone here uh, the Swiss franc Swiss National Bank are still hiking rates and so um, yeah, there's a. I would say it's more of a um, again waiting really for the dollar this week to de to decide and the Fed to decide what they're doing with interest rates. Again, if if we do get uh, the Fed looking to potentially hike rates, then you can see prices go to the upside. If we see um, inflation come at lower or as expected, then we're going to see prices actually come down and there's no demand zone or supply zone that's going to really stand in the way of any kind of fundamental analysis to be fair you're going to have to with, with demand zones and supply zones you need the fundamentals on your side in order um to support your uh, your trade so um yeah i think we're just really just waiting for the for tuesday to come around and see what happens with uh, with inflation and what the fed are likely to do um pound sorry the dollar cad so dollar cad from last week we had the canadian dollar actually strengthen against uh the majority of currencies and this is because what we saw was a surprise bank of canada um policy rate they hiked policy rates to 4.75 percent so 
Again, the Bank of Canada upends markets by boosting policy rates to seven to four point seven five percent. Overheating economy is cited as reason for twenty five basis point hike. McLem doesn't give explicit guidance on the next potential move, and so the Bank of Canada defied expectations by restarting its interest rate tightening cycle, saying the economy is running too hot, and so um, that took the market by surprise. And as I said before. You know, there's no demand zone that's going to stand in the way of fundamentals or risk sentiment. And so the demand zones I had there before, once, you know, the Canadian dollar started to uh, surprise the markets by hiking rates, no technical level is going to really hold. And so um, not in the short term anyway, the market has to revalue what the Canadian dollar is worth. And so you saw prices move to the downside. So um I am actually quite uh, bullish on the Canadian dollar, not necessarily against the US dollar. So, um, uh, so there are some other pairs that I am quite uh, bullish on the um, Canadian dollar against. But if you do want to be a, a buyer of the Canadian dollar versus the US dollar, then I think that's going to be a really nice area to look for. Technically, a, uh, a sell trade. Zooming out a bit, this area has been touched several times, right? This isn't. It's becoming less and less of a bargain. So, my opinion would be prices would have to really come down to if I'm looking to buy the uh, the dollar against the Canadian dollar. Um, technically, I think the best area is going to be right down by the one three twos. Or if again there's a surprise in inflation, uh, be remaining sticky or going higher with the Federal Reserve having to potentially hike rates, um, uh, you could see prices uh, bounce from here but uh, let's see what happens it's not really a pair that I'm interested in trading from a central bank perspective we've got the pound dollar and the pound dollar uh, going from strength to strength again we did see some weakness uh, last week with the US dollar we did see a supply zone you know uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, react to this area here but um, the dollar basically being a bit uncertain and the pound in fact um, you know the market pricing in some more hikes. I think the pound is um, uh, looking to be uh, supported. Also, as well, UK likely to dodge a recession with anemic growth. Um, the BCC says the business group upgrades outlook despite lingering inflation and household spending and business investment are both stronger. So the UK economy will probably skirt a recession but sputtering through anemic growth in the year ahead due to lingering inflation, the British Chambers of Commerce said. And so um, I think they're in a better place than Europe at the moment. And we'll get into Europe in a sec, but when it comes to uh, the pound dollar, Again, with any kind of dollar trades, this uh, I think this week we're really at the mercy of what the data is saying. And so there is a demand zone here. So if you do see prices come down to this demand zone and look for any kind of buy trades, if you want to continue buying the British pound over the US dollar, if prices drift up this week and we come into this supply zone and then you get some triggering uh um, fundamental news with regards to strengthening dollar then I think that's going to be very nice a very nice area to look for uh, some buy trades on the dollar and some short trades on the on the pound dollar and uh, for those of you who are interested the enrollment for the trading 180 members area and the mentoring group is going to open on the 19th of June Monday so seven days uh, from this video and um, I know a lot of people have been waiting to get involved um, in this and uh, again just to kind of give you a, a brief um, description of what you'll, you'll, you'll get you'll get mentoring from me within the uh, discord channel where I um, give you my analysis in-depth analysis charts discussions with um, some great traders also get access to uh, the fundamental analysis spreadsheet where I give you my trading bias on the pairs also as well you get access to the um, exclusive videos for members only and uh, that I don't put on YouTube as well as Wednesday live group calls and so and much 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 more so if you are um, interested in joining, the enrollment opens on the 19th of June and it would only be for a limited time, maybe around about five, six, seven days. It's a short window that you can join. So um, yeah, if you want to, uh, 
just have a look on the 19th of June. Check out trading180.com. So going to the euro dollar and the euro dollar um, from an interest rate uh, perspective, the ECB uh, are expected to hike twice um, and are seen as actually one of the hawkish central banks. The ECB is seen headed for Goldilocks moment with rate path just right. So economists aren't concerned about the over or under tightening deposit rate to hit 3.75% in July. Hold there until June 2024. And so the European Central Bank will neither raise rates too far nor lift, nor stop lifting them too early, according to economists survey, um, surveyed by Bloomberg, who see borrowing costs peaking in July. And so um, although that sounds fantastic, um, the problem is is that the Eurozone succumbs to mildest of recessions on energy shocks. So revised Eurostat data reveal first downturn since the pandemic and growth likely to have resumed this quarter in um, inflation easing. So um, the market is actually looking past the fact that we had a technical recession in Europe, which typically is actually negative for a, um, for a currency I say negative, but it depreciates uh, the currency. And so um, it says Euro had a winter um, recession after all. And you would have thought that the market would have reacted, but I think the market might be looking past uh, the, this, um, this recession and thinking that growth is likely to resume um, later this quarter, but that data needs to come out um, maybe the next uh, maybe next month or the month after. But, um, but yeah, for me, um, the Euro has become a bit of a, a trickier pair to trade simply because um, that strength might be is, is waning right in terms of um, economic strength and if it continues then what that does is that it puts pressure on the European Central Bank actually to reduce their hikes because central banks don't necessarily want to hike during um, during a recession because you'll make the recession worse by making borrowing and lending costs more expensive. So businesses suffer, households suffer with mortgage repayments. And so, um, you know, central banks typically will tend to be a lot more cautious with regards to hiking rates in a recession. And so, yeah, if you do want to get short on the euro dollar and short um, by the uh, dollar in anticipation of a stronger dollar, then I think now maybe slightly higher is actually quite a decent area to look for some um, some short trades or maybe up into the 108.50s. But again, this is really going to be driven by, uh, you know, the CPI data and what the Fed say on Wednesday. But if you're looking for any kind of buy trades, then I would probably say you've got that area there as a uh, uh, demand zone starting from around here. In fact, I'll just draw this from here. So that's really where you're looking at in terms of um, uh, your first kind of demand zone to look for, to buy the euro if you think that the dollar is going to get weak uh, or weaker and depreciate and um, yeah I think that's pretty much it you're looking for that kind of uh, that pullback so those are the areas you're looking for euro yen I've added this uh, this pair <coughs> to the weekly analysis as you do have a um, bit of divergence between the ECB and the Bank of Japan. Yes, the Bank of Japan are holding rates in the possible yield curve control adjustment in June or July. But for now, they are, um, I, say, I say June, it's probably more July, in fact, um, end of July. But um, you... That's you know maybe a couple months away, so there are there is you know still an opportunity to short that yen, and so looking at where the supply and demand zones are, let's look at here, and then we've got some supplies. We've made higher highs, sorry, some demand there, and yeah, this demand zone is going to be down here as well. So you can see where prices have made higher highs, higher lows here, high low high low and then you've seen new highs so when prices pull back to that area there you can see prices have reacted right and then you're just getting involved in you know the lower time frames and looking for buyers when you when prices come down um so there so there, that's where we are now and i do think that again if if, if europe um come out and they're actually quite dovish 
with their um, with their announcement because they have their announcement on Thursday. I think yeah, I think it is Thursday, um, and they reduce the fact that they might be maybe hiking one more time. Then you could actually see the euro weaken as well. So we could come down to at least a one four six fifties or one four six round number. Um, but my bias at the moment would be uh, out of the two uh, with the with the European Central Bank hiking of being more hawkish. You should see prices go to the upside, but I would be more looking for pullbacks into um, demand zones rather than looking to buy at higher. So either looking to buy somewhere around here or a pullback into this demand zone before looking at getting long and uh, euro pound. So again, we've seen this move to the downside. And although the... Um, the ECB have been actually the more of the actually I would say more of the hawkish central bank out of the two. I think they probably have. Um, I think the pound has gained a bit of an edge simply because of the economic uh, status. We just looked at the pound being um, not going into um, a recession, whereas we've had the euro actually succumb to the mildest of recessions. And so when you look at that on a price chart. This is why you're seeing um, the euro weaken against the um, the pound. So let me just zoom out a little bit and just see if I can get a little bit more detail in terms of any kind of demand zones. If you do want to be a buyer of the euro, it's going to either be there or the nearest area is going to be around here. Um, but the path of these resistance looks like it's to the downside. So any pullbacks. I think are going to be decent uh, shorting areas to, to buy the pound over the um, over the euro, but just purely based off of uh, recession and, and if the market is focused on um, you know the recession and the weakness that recessions bring, then that should be a decent trade uh, to the short side. Uh, looking at the Australian dollar, US dollar, and this week. We had another surprise from a central bank, and that was the Australian uh, RBA, um, the Reserve Bank of Australia, being very hawkish. So hawkish Australian economist sees RBA raising key rate to 4.6%, and um, they did raise rates this week, uh, surprised the market. And so uh, with that, you saw prices actually go higher. And as I always keep saying, there's no supply zone or demand zone that's going to stand in the way of the fundamentals, right? And that's how you pick, you know, the, the best trades or stay out of trades that you shouldn't necessarily be taking. Because if you understand what's happening, um, you know, beyond the price chart, then you can, you know, if you're planning on getting short based off just a technical level and you didn't know that the RBA had hiked rates, then um, you're going to get caught on the wrong side, right? Or get stopped out. Whereas if you knew that they hiked rates and that it typically appreciates a currency, then if you were short here pre, you know, the news, then you could just get out of the trade and just not take the trade afterwards, right? So um, with that being said, you would have to take that supply zone away and this turns to now demand and this turns to demand, right? So you've got some demand zones here. So if you are looking to be a buyer of the Australian dollar based off of Dollar, um, Australian dollar strength and US dollar weakness, then that actually is a really nice zone to look for uh, a buy trade. And finally, gold. So gold, again, holding up within this uh, this range, this auction between uh, this demand zone here, the 1933s, and we've got the 1985s areas. Um, again, this is decisions have to be made with regards to <clears throat> the value of gold, and that would now depend upon what the Fed um, are doing as well as risk sentiment. But for now, gold has been in this uh, this auction, this range, and so this week is going to be pivotal. So if you think the dollar is going to get weaker, um, you're looking for a pullback into that demand zone. If you think the uh, the dollar is going to get stronger then you're looking for a pullback into you know that supply zone there um, or even a bit higher up before looking at getting 
shorts. Now, um, there was this article on Bloomberg which said central bankers are absolutely buying gold, says Crowell. And this was six days ago, and we had it said we saw record holdings from central banks increase significantly in 2022 and will continue into the year. Ruth Crowell's chief executive officer at the London Bullion Market Association discusses the supply and demand for gold and her outlook on the precious metals. She speaks to Bloomberg Television and so on and so forth, right? And so, um, you know, obviously a very smart woman works in the gold industry, and so um, it's you know, she sees central banks looking to continue to buy gold, then any pullbacks to demand zones, whether it's this demand zone in the 1940s or just below should be seen as decent buying uh, opportunities for gold. And um, uh, yeah, that's pretty much where we are now. Um, yeah, that's it for this week, guys. I hope you um, have a great trading week. Don't forget to check out Trading 180. Um, and the enrollment starts 19th of June. Um, take care, guys, Take and uh, hope you have a great trading week.